Today we're going to look at beans, scopes and attributes, which is going to help us set up the environment whereby we can have the model elements of our architecture communicate with the view, passing data from the model to the view uh, via these attributes and beans in the various scopes. So we'll look at what the Java bean is, we'll learn about scopes in internet applications, and we'll also look to see how to use the attributes in the various scopes. According to the, uh, the online material, a Java bean is a component that is reusable. Uh, it's a, just an ordinary piece of software that follows a, a simple naming convention and therefore presents a standard interface to other beans programs and tools. And it is really very simple. There's a set of minimum requirements and a set of optional requirements. And so as far as uh, Java is concerned, a Java bean is a Java class, just an ordinary, plain old Java class that complies with the Java bean component model. And for it to comply, it must be a public class. It must have a constructor with no parameters. In other words, a default constructor. And it must also implement the java.io.serializable interface. And in implementing that interface, it can then be saved to file, it can be sent down data streams and so on. For example, it could be written from a server to a client because it can be serializable. So those are fairly limited but essential minimum requirements for a class to be termed a Java bean. Some optional features, well, a Java bean will usually have properties. In other words, some variables in which to store data. And for each of those properties, you might have one or both of the following. An accessor method, a get method, or a mutator method, a set method. And these methods, as you're well aware, will permit the client of this class to get or set data values for those properties. It's also possible to have various listeners registered and deregistered with these beans and that can therefore set up the requirement to have certain callback methods to be implemented in them. But as uh, it says at the top of the screen here, these are optional features. So for us to call it a Java bean, it must be a public class, it must have the default constructor method, and it must implement the serializable interface. And so here we have a very simple bean example. In the header for the class, we can see that it's called my bean. This is the important thing, implements java.io.serializable. And simply implementing that interface means that objects of this bean can now be deconstructed for saving or writing in some way or another. Saving to file, writing down data streams, and so on. And when it gets to the other end, because it's serializable, having been deconstructed and sent down the line, it will then automatically be reconstructed by the Java Virtual Machine. In this very simple example, we've got just one property called name of type string. It could be private or some other kind of uh, visibility set to it. Here's the default constructor. Now a constructor method has as its job to initialize the variables that are within that object. So uh, here we're just setting up a name to be just something fairly arbitrary. And then in this example, we've got a get and a set method for this property. But you don't have to have both. You might perhaps have just a get. But if you've not got any mechanism in here for setting the value for that name to something meaningful, then it might not make much sense to omit set name. So usually, with a default constructor, which is giving default values, you probably would want a set method as well. And that's basically all there is to Java beans, but they will be very useful for us later on.